Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to the channel. My name is Mark Roden, and today we are going to be going over the top 10 best, most fun, cool, sick, nasty, awesome, radical cars for less than $7,000. Today is part seven of a multi-part series that we got going on where we talk about different 10 different cars under each price range. So we started with 1,000, then it was two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. That's gonna be 15, 20, 25, 50, and then 100K. And in every video, every car is going to be different from the last video. So if you watch the first 10 videos, you can get 100 different cars for under $10,000. But if you watch all of them, you can get like 155 because there's an honorable mention in every video too. So technically 11 in every video uh, for under $100,000, which is a freaking great deal, guys, right? This is like a bargain, like Costco deal right now, buddy. But today is a 7K video. So without further ado, let's get right into it. All right, so starting off this list, not very strong but it is the wonderful toyota mr2 sw20 a very hard to handle little japanese rocket it comes with a two liter inline four making only 130 horsepower and it was rear wheel drive but it was also mid-engine, so it suffered from something called snap oversteer. However, people do say that it's easier to control when you once you like get the hang of it, but the fact that it has that big, massive learning curve is just not a good thing, obviously. A lot of people are gonna have to have to have to learn there. They also look just incredible though. One of the best looking JDM cars of the 90s, if you ask me. So if you do decide to go with it, then you just know that you're a, a cool kid that got a that got a cool car. Cool kid with a cool car, you know? Next up is kind of the complete opposite of the MR2 though. It is the freaking Mercedes SL 500 R129, which is such a classy little underrated machine that only the old heads seem to like. Like I see a lot of old heads praise the Mercedes SL line, but it's time for us youth to praise them because this one comes with a huge five liter V8 making a very nice 304 horsepower and it was rear wheel drive. And now obviously that like isn't super fast, but that's still pretty good, bro. Like 304 horsepower is pretty good. The SL line has always kind of been like the highest line for Mercedes sports cars and they depreciate really, really hard. So lucky for us, we can get them for quite cheap now and once you do you get this insanely good sports car with all the mercedes luxury in it like the luxury of mercedes is top dollar but maybe you want something that can go wherever you need to go and uh and do it with the top off well look no further than the jeep wrangler tj i'm not a huge fan of the jeep wrangler but that doesn't mean that they aren't good they're very good vehicles uh it comes with a 2.4 liter inline four making a nice 147 horsepower and it was obviously four by four as well but that's not the point of this car it's not meant to be incredibly fast so it really shouldn't matter to you what the engine size and horsepower is it's just meant to go wherever it is that you need it to go without having issues it does that part perfectly okay you ever see these jeep guys they take them up freaking the side of mount everest they're like tanks they'll go wherever you you want them to go the engine is also incredibly reliable and in my opinion i i don't think it's much fun to drive but some people say that it's like one of the most enjoyable cars to drive so you got to make up your mind on that you like going fast and cornering and stuff like that well it probably won't be fun for you but if you like just cruising with the top down listening into some blake shelton then this might be the choice next up is yet another awesome little german machine the audi a5 8t which just so happens to be one of the most beautiful audis ever built in my personal opinion they come with a two liter turbocharged inline four making two 211 horsepower and it was all-wheel drive of course it's a freaking audi they're all going to be all-wheel drive and it's not the most reliable out there especially not for audi who makes like the a4s and the a4s are pretty reliable but it does get the job done when you need it to this car is mainly for the guy who just wants to look rich in his daily driver because people will not be able to tell if this thing is an s5 or not so to him he's like oh i got an s5 and everybody else is gonna be like oh that guy's got an s5 even though us car guys are gonna be like hey you don't got an s5 but if you want to look like you make six figures and this is a car for you they aren't that quick though and they aren't the most reliable so it's definitely a fake it till you make it kind of car if you are really looking for something that's powerful from audi i would recommend going with something like an s4 Number six is going to the wonderful Volkswagen Corrado, another German car. I think this is like three already, but this one can be very fast if you want it to. It comes with a 2.8 liter V6 or VR6, making a pretty decent 172 horsepower, and it was front wheel drive. And yes, I know that that isn't that great, but 
The engine in this puppy is one of the best engines to build in the world. The VR6 engines from Volkswagen, mwah, mwah. they are an absolute tuning legend and you can buy it for so dirt cheap, which just makes no sense. Now, yes, since it is kind of rare, the prices are a little bit higher than they should be, but I still think it is well worth the price for a Corrado. Uh, Corrado's aren't seen that much. And so it obviously, yes, they're going to be a little bit more expensive, but for under seven grand, dude, that's a pretty good deal. Number five, yes, we're already halfway there. Puppy has got to go to the Honda Prelude fifth generation, a car that people are finally starting to realize the potential behind them. Uh, they're so cool, and I've been loving the Prelude since the dawn of time. And just recently, I've been starting to see a lot of TikToks about like, oh, I want a Prelude. Prelude's my dream car, and so I'm super happy with that. Uh, they come with a 2.2 liter inline four, making 195 horsepower, and it was front wheel drive. And they are just such cool looking little cars, but sadly, they aren't actually that great for building power on um compared to most hondas i should say the civics have always been like the golden standard when it comes to tuning for honda so if you just swap the motor which is super easy to do in a honda then you can definitely make some good power on this car the problem is that the engine that comes in the prelude isn't that great for making power so most people want to swap it and at that point it's like you might as well have bought the honda that came with that motor in the first place but they do look incredible one of the best looking hondas of all time in my opinion and they are very unique so Number four, though, is such an underrated car, the freaking Mitsubishi Galant VR4. The fact that VR4 is in the name should tell you enough to be like, wow, I want this car. But back when Mitsubishi was still making cool cars, they made this thing. All right, buddy. It comes with a two liter VR4 making a nice 195 horsepower. And it was all wheel drive, actually, because Mitsubishi, Mitsubishi, I hate saying that name. Mitsubishi loved making their sports cars all wheel drive, which is good news because it launches like absolute mad lad. All right. And if you ever do want to drift, I know people are like, oh, well, it's not real wheel drive. All wheel drive cars, you could just swap it to rear wheel drive pretty damn easy, buddy. All you have to do to make this thing insanely fast and slap a huge turbo on it and you're golden you're golden these vr4s are absolutely no joke do not sleep on the gallant vr4 or you will get gapped by one they're pretty much a pocket evo Okay, so third place isn't that quick or great in terms of performance, but it is just one of my favorite cars in the whole wide world, so I put it here, baby. It is the BMW 635 CSI E24. It's such a classy little car, and freaking Steve from Stranger Things drives one, so you know it's cool because Steve is like the cool one of the coolest characters in Stranger Things. I almost said the coolest, but we all know that's Hopper. Uh, it comes with a 3.8 liter inline six, making a decent 256 horsepower, and it was rear wheel drive. And now that's not insane for today's standards, but for the 80s, that was pretty damn good, bro. And for some reason, just literally nobody talks about it. It doesn't make any sense. If you want an E30 that's a little bit longer, then chances are you will love this car. Plus, they actually make some pretty decent drift cars as well. It's just that people are too afraid to drift them because they're such rare, different cars. They just look so great. Before you go and mindlessly buy an E36, look into some of these older BMWs because there are some gems out there. Second place, however, is arguably one of the most overrated cars in all of the car scene, but it's still a very good choice for under $7,000. We are, of course, talking about the Nissan 240SX S14. Yes, we all know these cars are only truly worth like $3,000, but sadly, that's not how the market is working right now, buddy. And so if you want one, you're going to have to cough up the change. But it comes with a 2.4 liter inline four, making only 155 horsepower, and it was rear wheel drive. And it is absolutely nothing special in terms of performance out of the gate but you can tune the ka motor to make some decent power and on top of that they are one of the best drift platforms to learn on in the world they also have an insane aftermarket support you're going to have an absolute blast owning and building one of these cars as long as you buy it that's in good enough condition and on top of all that stuff they also look pretty damn cool when done right in my personal opinion but the honorable mention for today is another German beast. It is the Audi S4 B6, which is, yes, probably the ugliest generation of S4, but sadly, you will have to make some compromises to get that beloved horsepower. Uh, it comes with a huge 4.2 liter V8, making 339 horsepower, and it was all-wheel drive. But you know how I said before, the A5 is kind of unreliable? Well, the S4 B6 is also kind of unreliable, so if you want to make power, it's a very good choice, but if you want to daily drive it, it's not that great of a choice. However, 
first place is the best of all the worlds combined and it is so under freaking rated it is the eighth generation honda accord son yes i'm telling you to buy a honda accord over an s14 or an s4 but hear me out man it comes with a 3.5 liter v6 that makes a decent 271 horsepower and it was sadly front wheel drive but think about that for one second 270 horsepower is no slouch and this car comes with a manual transmission too so it'll be fun to drive while you can haul all your friends around in it without having to worry about gas you don't have to worry about repairs it's a freaking honda man you don't have to worry about any of that stuff and on top of all that it can be turned into something insanely fast and cool if you want it to these accords have a pretty decent aftermarket scene for them and sure it's not as good as something like a civic for tuning but it isn't bad either and they look incredible and absolutely just slammed on the ground with some stretchy boy wheels and the best part of all of that is that it's still cheap to build the car too that's the problem with a lot of these cars out there if people are like oh well the car is cheap but then building the car is not going to be cheap honda is cheap all the way around you buy the car for cheap you build it for cheap you have a manual transmission enough room to store all your friends it's the best of all the worlds yes it's sadly front wheel drive but if it's going to be your first car you probably should get something that's not rear wheel drive anyway but ladies and gentlemen that is the end of today's video i hope you enjoyed part seven of the multi-part series that we got going on tonight i will be live streaming on this youtube channel i hope i hope i'm gonna keep this in here because i don't know but i hope i'm gonna be able to figure it out and i'm gonna try and get some car x drift racing live and i'm gonna talk to you guys and answer some of your questions on this channel uh and we'll, we'll see what i'm gonna try i'm gonna try I, I can't make any promises but i hope that tonight i'm gonna be live streaming some video games mainly just so i can talk to you guys but also just to have you uh, entertain you guys a little bit more um but yeah anyway thank you guys so much for watching that's Vidania. have a nice night